our first stop on Molokai was to Kanamitsu's Bakery for breakfast. Here we are at the famous uh, Kanamitsu's Bakery in Molokai. The town name is uh, Kawanaka Kai. We then made our way to Palaau State Park. Here we are at Palaau Papa um, Lookout in a state park on Molokai and we're heading for the lookout right now. We first headed for Kalau Papa Lookout. This peninsula is the site of the leprosy settlement. Surrounded by ocean and high cliffs, Kalau Papa lies isolated on Molokai's north shore. Here we are at the lookout for the Kalau Papa uh, Peninsula. That's the peninsula where the um, leper colony was located. And apparently there's still a couple people who are living who still have Hansen's syndrome, but um, you, you used to be able to take a donkey trip down, but apparently uh, there was a landslide a couple years ago and they don't have that anymore. So the only way is that you can get to visit that, and that is a historic site, is to um, take either a plane or a boat there. In an attempt to stop the spread of leprosy, King Kamehameha V signed an act in 1865 ordering advanced cases to be isolated at Kalau Papa. The Kalau Papa Peninsula was remote and cut off by sheer 1600 foot high cliffs and rough ocean waters. The first group of exiles were dropped off by boat on the far side of the peninsula at Kalau They suffered not only from the disease and the sorrow of separation, but from the inadequate food, shelter, and medical care. Eventually, through the efforts of Father Damien and others, conditions improved. The original settlement was abandoned in favor of the Kalau Papa settlement on this side of the peninsula during the late 1800s and early 1900s. With the advent of cell phone drugs in the late 1940s, the number of persons isolated decreased. In 1969, the isolation policy was officially abandoned. Few diseases have evoked as much fear as leprosy. In the 1830s, people didn't understand the disease or its transmission, as it could take months or years for symptoms to appear. With no immunity to introduce diseases, Hawaiians were especially vulnerable. This disease affects the nerves, respiratory system, skin, and eyes. It's caused by Mycobacterium leprae, a rod-shaped bacillus first discovered by the Norwegian physician Dr. Gerard Hansen in 1873. The effects of the disease may include loss of sensation, especially in the extremities, skin lesions, crippling, and disfigurement. Hansen's disease was cured through the use of cell phone drugs introduced in the 1940s. After a few weeks of treatment, patients no longer transmit the disease. In fact, we now know that this is one of the least contagious and communicable diseases. Only 5% of the world's population are susceptible to the disease. Striving to lead happy, productive lives in the face of adversity, daily life at Kalau Papa settlement centered around school, work, and church. Kalau Papa has its own post office, fire station, store, and landing field. Music, sport, and social gatherings still bring everyone together. Most of the supplies of the settlement continue to be brought in by the annual barge and small planes. Kalau Papa National Historic Park was established in 1980 to preserve the cultural and natural resources of the peninsula and the homes of the remaining residents. 
Father Damien de Wooster landed on the Kalapaupa Peninsula on May 10, 1873. For the next 26 years, Damien acted not only as a priest, but as a doctor, nurse, and carpenter. His example and perseverance gave hope to the patients and called worldwide attention to their needs. After a five-year struggle with the disease, Damien died here on April 15, 1889. Brother Joseph Dutton arrived in 1886 and spent 44 years here dressing sores, working at the Baldwin Home for Boys, and engaging in voluminous correspondence. Mother Marion Cope and the Sisters of St. Francis arrived at the settlement in 1888, having cared for leprosy patients at the Kakaako Branch Hospital in Honolulu since 1883. Their presence assured Damien that his work would be continued. This is the State of Hawaii historical marker for Kalau Papa Peninsula. And from here you can kind of see a little bit of the highest sea cliffs in the world, or highest cliffs in the world, I guess. Um, Molokai used to be bigger, but apparently many, many years ago um, it fell into the ocean, a huge part of it, and that is what's left. So the craters used to go further out into the, where the Pacific Ocean is now, and um, apparently it caused a tsunami which was as high as skyscrapers. Here you can see the 1600 foot high cliffs. This view shows the complete peninsula. Here you can see the town of Kalaupapa as well as the airport at the tip of the peninsula. And here we are walking back up to the parking lot. And we are heading out to the hike to Phallic Rock. These are representative images of petroglyphs seen throughout the Hawaiian Islands. This panel tells the story of Kaule o Nanahoa. It was a well manicured and easy walk to the historic landmark. There were interesting rock formations as we came upon the historic site. And continuing the hike up. And there it is. Kaulio Nanahoa. Many years ago, the man Nanahoa and his wife Kawahuna lived on this green hill of Pulua. One day, a beautiful young girl appeared and began to admire herself in a pool of water. Nanahoa watched admiringly, and the girl returned a smile to his reflection in the pool. Growing jealous, the wife grabbed the young girl by the hair. Nanahoa hit his wife in quick-tempered anger and sent her tumbling down a nearby cliff, where she turned to stone. Nanahoa also turned to stone, but his power remains in this male rock. It is said that if a woman goes to Koala Nanahoa with offerings and spends the night, she will return home pregnant. Fertility rocks are found on all the islands, but this is the finest example. The rock's present form is a natural configuration which has been carved to some extent.
And here we are descending the trail. Here are some of the views of the ironwood trees as we descended the path. Our next stop as we headed towards the eastern side of Molokai was St. Joseph's Mission Church. This is St. Joseph's Church in St. Damien of Molokai Parish. This is uh, St. Damien of Molokai Parish, St. Joseph's Church, built by St. Damien in 1876. Unfortunately, we can't go inside the church today because there are bees inside and they even canceled mass today. This is in honor of uh, Captain Joseph Dutton, who was one of the people who uh, started caring for the lepers down in the colony. St. Joseph's Church is in Kamalo, and it's the third oldest church on the island. However, its current status is that of a mission. We didn't go into the church because there were supposedly bees inside. It wasn't until later when I looked at the full content of the note that I saw that it was over four months old. Here's a statue of Brother Joseph Dutton, who spent 44 years at the colony. I guess this is a statue of uh, St. Damien. <laughs> Someone put glasses on him. <laughs> Here is a statue of St. Damien adorned with lays, crucifixes, and a pair of glasses. This is a plaque at the site honoring St. Damien. Our next stop was Kumimi Beach. Uh, here we are on uh, the, almost the most uh, eastern part of Murakai. Uh, you can see Lanai over there. And there's Maui across the channel. I'm not sure what that the rock over there is, but I'm sure we'll get closer to it. There's a view of Maui from across the Pailolo Channel. If you look closely, you can see Kanaha Rock Islet Seabird Sanctuary in the distance. We next stopped at the Pu'u Ohoku Ranch store. We stopped at the store to get some much needed drinks. And of course, a really spiffy souvenir hat. There was a beautiful red hibiscus at the store entryway. Here is their guard dog. He was very hauli. Our penultimate stop was a pull-off on the road. And here once again, we're at the southern end of Mokai. Kind of a turn-off. Here we can get kind of a look. What's around? Unfortunately, there's a lot of trees, so you can't get a real good look. At... Oh, there's the waterfall. Anyway, we're supposed to head for the waterfall, but it's a four-mile round-trip hike, so we probably won't do it today. Here we have a view of Halawa Bay. 
Here is a view towards Pupa Akai Gulch. And here in the distance, you can see Moaula Falls. The road ended at Halawa Beach Park. So here we are where Halawa Falls Trail begins. The falls are up there. I don't know if I can get another better picture of them by moving down. In this picture, Halawa Stream is in the foreground. Past the sandbar is Kama'ala'ea Beach. Here we can see Kama'ala'ea Beach from a slightly different perspective. This was a volcanic stone sitting in the sand. Here's a view from a little Path. It just went a little ways up. Unfortunately, the coconut trees are hiding the falls. It's really quite the scene. Here we are looking up into the Halawa Valley. It turns out that most of the falls are hidden from this viewpoint and only the very top can be seen. Well, found a place where you can kind of see the waterfall there, but obviously uh, it's quite a ways away. It's a four mile round trip to hike up to see it. But here is the coast down here. Here we are walking towards Kawili Beach. The sand was littered with volcanic rock. Here's a view of Kama'ala'ea Beach from Kawili Beach. Here we are looking out towards Halawa Bay. Here, Mary is making her way to Kawili Beach. To her right is a Hawaiian shrine. There are quite a lot of lava rocks at this part of the beach.